you love it? Yeah, I do. That's so cool. Yeah, run right now. Cool. You can jump on, grab a seat here. So this is a lane. Oh. And the lane's got some hair. A lot of it. A lot of hair. So we're gonna go. Are we gonna go there? Are we gonna go there? Are we gonna go there? Yes. Fun. And you're starting a new job on Monday. And like you said, I think you just said, I'm starting a new job and I'm having my like quarter life crisis. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hair's gotta go. Hair's gotta go. And do you want a black one, a pink one, or a stripey one? Stripey. Cool. It, are you? Oh, come back. Of course. Because I can tell when people, people come through the door, some people are really nervous and skittish. Some people are like, oh, I'll just get this off my head. <laughs> you're one of those with the mindset, oh, I'll just get this off of my head. I do just want this off my you head. Just want it, you just want to go on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been thinking about it on and off for like two or three years. So really, this is just. Yeah. Yeah. It finally happening. Yeah. Now, do you want to keep the ponytail or anything, or you just want it gone? Just one gone. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm thinking the same. Yeah, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do. I saw, yeah, the picture you sent you. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna show them the picture, mm -hmm. but that's got clippers on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna do clippers. Yeah. And just have all that go off whoom, with the clippers. Do it that way for your liberation, because the feel of like clippers going into your head. What does it feel like? I've never. Exactly. And that's why yeah, like you're gonna remember this when you're 80. You look back and you think, oh my god, that was so much fun. It doesn't hurt. Anymore. No, it doesn't it's hurt at all. Good. It's a really cool sensation because it's very soft and tingly. Oh, yeah? But it's a very cool sensation. But the big thing about it, because your hair weighs a ton. It does. Like, it's really heavy. So your hair's yes. all coming off. Yeah, yeah. And also, because your ponytail type is like, it's a really thick one. So all that weight's going to be gone. Yeah. And the next thing that happens is it's like, I call it phantom hair. So once it's gone, you still feel like you have long hair, but it's not there. So you put a shirt on, you put a jacket on, you're going to go to throw the hair out, but it's going to be no hair. That's going to last about three days. After three days, you start to get used to it. Yeah, yeah. But you'll do things like when you get in a car, you're going to go to pull, hold your hair, but there's not going to be any hair. So your first three days is going to be phantom hair, where you feel like you still have it, but you don't. And the weight of it, because you're going to do this, and there's nothing. So that's the first sensation. And then um, after three days, you start to get used to it. Also, you're going to look so different. But you just embrace it because it's just who you are now. Oh. That's who, this long hair is who you are. Then short hair has become who you are now. And like you said, it comes back anyway. I used to get my hair caught all the time. And like, if I put a backpack on, right? And yeah. Straps, and anything with straps, really, I like yeah. get caught. And this. Yep. Yeah. All those things. And now you're going to be liberated of all that, of all that for, for, you know. And like it's like chapters in your life. This is now your next chapter in your life. And uh, then if you decide to keep it short, that's what I'm here for. If you want to grow it back, I'll help you with that too. Or if you want to do like bobs or whatever, you know. Did it's the start of something new in your life. Yeah. So if I do decide I want to keep it that short, yeah. like how many weeks would it be before it? You're going to be about every four to six weeks, four to six up weeks. to eight. Yeah. Yeah. Now, because you're Cantonese, now I have another client who's Cantonese too. She does clippers all over, like she's just. <laughs> but she leaves it longer on top, but she loves the clippers now. Uh -huh. And she's traditionally like long hair like you. She um, She's already booked in for her next one. She comes every month and does uh, short, short, short haircuts, and she just loves it. So you never know where you end up. The haircut we're giving you, I think it's going to look amazing. And if you want to keep it, because sometimes you want to keep it for a few haircuts before you change it because you need to get it out of your system, right? I feel like that will probably be me. It's like I've got yeah. to at least try it and be living in it for yeah. a bit. Yeah, live it in a while. Like Don't be in a hurry to grow it out. Yeah. 
yeah, I see that happening with you too. So I'm here to support you. Come back. Yeah, your hair is so thick. I'm gonna need a few clips in there to hold it. At least four. Oh, three's working. So we're gonna do, yeah, we'll do uh, number three to number two. Time. Which means nothing to you. Did actually yep. Up. Now, can you see without your glasses? Um, not incredibly well, but sort of enough to get some general outlines. Cool. So what we'll do? Leave them on for now, yeah, yeah. so that you can sort of see what's going on. Yeah. Cool. And what we'll do? We'll put it down like that. I'm gonna do it this way because yeah, I want you to enjoy the experience. So we put it down like that. I'll start in the back, and that's going to um, basically just fall into your lap. So you'll start to feel the the weight coming on. Yeah. Start drum rolling. Start drum rolling. Like drum -rolling. Cool. Yeah, put that like that sort of thing. Yep. And are you ready? Drum rolling. Drum rolling. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah. Cool. Oh, that was just a light and fuzzy. Feels good, eh? Yeah. All that weight's coming off here. It is. Oh, oh, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, that's tricky because it's so heavy. I try to comb it and put it somewhere and it just wants to drop. It is. Yeah. Surely it won't be the longest hit you've ever dealt with though. No, I've done with, I've, over the years, pretty much I've seen everything at this point. Yeah. I feel like the main story of this hit was that lockdown 2020 happened and I just couldn't Yeah. live since. Yeah. So it just became long due to neglect, not due to planning or anything like no, that? No, it was completely unintentional. Unintentional. That's a, that happens a lot. A lot of people with hair like yours, yeah. it's not because of planning, it's just because of, I call it neglect. Or unintentional, like you said, but yeah, all those people do that as well. And now you get to enjoy haircuts for a while.
through the back if you want. Put your hands there. Oh, that's stretchy. That's cool, eh? It is cool. Yeah. Come on over, let's wash your hair. Okay. Come this way. Oh, I slipped on my own hair. Yeah. I'll clean it up. Come on over. But now a lot of them are leaving again because now it's that bad again, right? You know, it's become... But yeah, Toronto's a pretty cool city. Like, I went to high school there. And uh, people from all over the world in Toronto. Mm. Now, were you raised in Wellington? Oh. Auckland? Auckland and a bit of Hutt Valley, so... Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that area is fun. Have you done it much before? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Oh, shit, I'm going to flip off your hair. I'm going to fall on your Long hair like that one is on the floor, it's like ice. It's deadly. Let me sweep it off for a second. Yeah. In this location, it's going on six years. Six years. Yeah. Oh. yeah. We've done well. Yeah. We've had fun. Oh, all kinds of crazy times because we started, of course, way before pandemics and stuff, and we survived all that, all that stuff. We went to your next chapters, you know. Life is chapters on the next one. Yeah. I can't even imagine. In the beginning, you, you, because the uncertainty was going to happen, and you felt like, oh, you know, I don't want to do my business, so you go into de defensive mode, but then as it goes along, and you start to figure out how to manage it, because there, there was, it was so unknown in the beginning. But it was more than that, because um, we had another location, and it got earthquake damaged, and we relocated to this location. And so a relocation is costly. Like, you, you open a business, is costly. Then we got earthquake damage. And then we moved to this location, and then when you get this going, and the pandemic comes along. So we went from earthquake damage, relocation, pandemic, and now we're coming out of pandemic. Well, we're out of pandemic. Now we're into inflationary times, it's right? It's one disaster. So after it's one after the other after the other. But the inflationary times, I'm not worried about it. Yeah. I can manage that. Yeah. That's economy. Other things like I can't control an earthquake. I can't control a pandemic. But I can control inflation because <laughs> I can do things, right? I yeah. can do marketing. So it was like, oh, if it's just inflation, I'm like, oh, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> yeah. You just come up with incentives and whatever to get people into your salon or, you know, that's stuff I can deal with. I mean, things like paying people or YouTube channels or doing donations. Yeah, no, the reason why we did the YouTube channel was because coming out of the first lockdown, right. People were doing cool things with their hair during the lockdown. Yeah. And I thought, oh, well, if people are doing that, why don't we put a YouTube channel, make a YouTube channel, and we can show this stuff. Because it was pretty, there were two things that were happening. Because New Zealand went for the elimination strategy in the yeah, beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah. we were the only salon in the world were New Zealand salons working without masks mm -hmm. at that time. So I was like, look at us, we don't have to wear a mask, and we can cut hair in a salon, where the other, every other salon in the world was staying home. They were all closed, and we were open. So I said, why don't we do a YouTube channel? Because everyone's doing crazy haircuts anyway, but we can do them on video without wearing a mask. Yeah. So that's how the whole thing began. And I didn't think it was going to last this long, but here we are because it got monetized. 
and it's you know people that are watching it and are interested so I'm like yeah just keep it going so after all this time it's like we still do it yeah. it's something fun I do on the side yeah. that all became it was absolutely a pandemic thing yeah. something to do during a pandemic and the pandemic's over and uh, you know it's still been it's been fun so I keep doing it I haven't seen any, anything on it yet but what's some of the most um I don't know whether it's the craziest stuff or just mullets, Princess Diana's haircut, bull cuts. The haircut you're doing it would be one like it totally suits the channel. That's why when you show me a picture, I'm like, oh, yeah, we can put that on the YouTube channel. Well, um, I'm, now I'm curious, like, when what what's your vibe check when you're like, this should be a channel thing versus oh, it's all discretionary. This all yeah, yeah, because of monetization, if it's going to create interest for the channel or a buzz, yeah, for the channel. Um, and if not, then because you know what I would say, and pe what people watching the channel, they see a lot of this stuff and they think it's a lot of fun. But this is only probably about like less than five percent of what I do, because mm. ninety-five percent of what I do is regular salon bookings, yeah, which yeah. is lots of trims and lots of foils and lots of highlights, lots of colors, lots of roots, lots of really like day to day stuff right it's only so many videos that yeah. can exist right? yeah now if I put a camera and started filming all my day to day it was not that interesting because 95% of what I do is just regular like work right it's like business as usual yeah. right and 5% of what you do for fun on the side that's the stuff you can record and put on yeah. YouTube yeah and then you going from like your hair was here yeah, yeah. to this yeah that's interesting it's fun to you know document it. That's true. Because now the channel is not just monetized, but it's also kind of like a creative portfolio. Yeah. There's that too. It's, you know, it's showing, showcasing things that I'm passionate about anyway. Shorter. <gasps> you can't really see it. No, I can't show it. Your glasses on. Oh, yeah. a quick question if I'm wanting to um, maintain that kind of style like yep. in my day to day what's what kind of um, what kind of stuff should I be looking into getting um, probably some quag if I have some still like I know yeah. I don't they, they ran out for the country because mm. New Zealand still has some distribution issues but I'll, I'll have something for you oh, the clay that we sell is called Bold Move is the best one um, I think I saw the last one, and then my, uh, there's probably more in the country now, it was before Christmas. Um, the last time we went to order it, it was uh, back order. Oh, yeah. But there have been a lot of uh, supplier chain issues around the world still. They're mostly done now. My supplier, they're at the end of it now, but there was, um, you know, still a few odd thing. But for like a year ago, you know, a year and a half ago, there was all kinds of supply chain issues. So that was the other thing, it's like, earthquake, pandemic, supply chain issues. You know, all things out of my control. Like, welcome to being a hairdresser or, you know, running a hair salon through all that crap. But like I said, now we're into uh, inflationary times. I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's easy <laughs> compared to all the other stuff. As long as I can get my, my products in and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. As long as I can get my clients into the salon. Oh yeah, we can deal with inflation. Mm -hmm. I can deal with a recession too. Hair salons actually do okay during recession. Really? Because people will 
cancel a big vacation. Oh, actually, I think I yeah. And then they want to do local things, and then getting your hair done is a, is a local feel good item that people will do during recessions. Yeah. So we tell big ticket items go, but smaller yeah. ticket like yeah. treats like this. Little feel good items like getting your hair done or buying lipstick or you know things like that. Like you'll uh, you'll skip a meal or you'll you'll eat like a cheap meal yeah. to uh, save the money to buy red lipstick. Small feel good items. Yeah. Oh, that's not just recessionary times. That's just it's life in general. Well. Life in general. Cleaning up some of the baby hairs I've got kind of on the side of just in front of my ears. Or That's the thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can take that right in yeah. too. Just because it feels like it kind of sticks out if I'm. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And he's coming soon. Maybe she wants a haircut too. <laughs> I told her I think she should cut her hair off. How long does the difference go? Just past her shoulders, but she won't. I told her she should. Because she always has a, she has bangs, a fringe, yeah. and it's always up in a ponytail. So all you see is the fringe, and the rest is up all the time. And I said, well, if you're going to have it up all the time, and you have those bangs down, you just cut off all the it's rest of it, and it's the same thing. Because yeah. all you do is emulate short hair. She's like, that's true. So I brought it up earlier in the week. I'm gonna come tonight. I think she's gonna get a haircut. I don't, I don't know. I don't think she knows it, but I think she's gonna get a haircut. She doesn't know it, but you know it. Well, I've made a few jokes about it. I've been joking about it. You've been seeding the idea, like planting the idea in her mind. Yeah, but you know what? She's I've been cutting her for a long time anyway. It's just getting her where she, you know, where I think she should be with it. So we're cutting her for years anyway. But I'm not going to put that one on YouTube. Her and I as friends. Yeah. So. Yeah. Camera's off. I'm like, uh, if I want to come back, say in a month's time, yep. can I do can I do a walk in or is it? You can just you can book online or you can book your next one now. Okay. Or I'll give you my mobile number. You can just also send me a text. Oh, easy. Yeah, because I'm going to want to take care of this for a while. Anyone who does a haircut on the YouTube channel, I'm going to follow, I'm going to do follow up with you anyway. This is a big change for you. I will not be needing one hand. I support it. But you're going to do this regardless. <laughs> I probably Yeah, and then it just ends up being a bonus on the YouTube. Yeah. So the fringe is a little bit shorter, I'm thinking. Or you like it long like that? I... Maybe a little bit shorter because yeah. like it grows that does, yeah. and like, if but it's the haircut, like, then I'll have to do it myself and that would be a bit Yeah. There's haircut you show me because that's all like a lot of the Korean Korean boy yeah. haircut. That's what we're doing. They like they have longer fringes and mm -hmm. floppy. I love that girls are doing uh, these haircuts. Well this is the day of like you know, gender who cares about your gender now? Mm -hmm. Just freaking do it. I mean it was what I was thinking because I thought I need a donate. Well, when I thought I was going to donate, I thought, it's going to be a significant length of hair. Yeah. I could choose to just get a shoulder length hair cut or something, but... Yeah. Or... Yeah, what you did was better because it's that impact that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. Are you going to blast you with the machine for a minute? Uh, yep. 
to get some of the moisture out. Because if I get a hair dryer on your hair, it's going to make a big volume. So what it means is when you take a shower, you can just wash your hair, shake it and go. And then we can put a little bit of product in it. So we'll do the same. This just speeds up that natural dry process. Yeah, yeah. So I'll blast you with this for a minute. And then after, we'll, uh, there's a little bit more cutting to do. I just need the moisture out of it now. So blast, yeah. First time ever with the Clippers, eh? It is. You like the feeling? I, I do, actually. You do. Because what's what happens is you become addicted to the feeling and you like look forward to your next haircuts. Yeah. And then you're like, I'm not ready to grow it yet. But I was telling you about my other client who's uh, Cantonese as well. Yeah. And she loves Clippers. She just wants short, short, super short size and back, a little bit longer on top. And she looks forward. She's been doing it for over a year now. Yeah. And she won't grow her hair out. She loves it. Oh, maybe you'll get two of them. Then. Yeah, I think I'm going to have two of them. Maybe the other one. Yeah. Get you two together. Good. She can be my senior. Yeah. Like, what did you do? But you know what's funny is I never hang out with my culture in this country. Like I'm from Canada. Yeah. I move here. I avoid Canadians like the plague because you don't move to New Zealand to hang out with Canadians. No. 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 So I never hang out with my culture. Yeah. I hang out with. But the thing about me, I just want to hang out with everybody. Like I want to hang out with Kiwis, but I also want to hang out with like other people from around the world, right? You know, you, just, you don't want to hang out with Canadians. You don't want to hang out with Kiwis. You just want to hang out with everybody, including Kiwis. And including everybody, like, yeah, that's what you want to do. Because that's what Wellington is like, it's like Toronto's the same, or international cities, right? Yeah, yeah. People from all over the world. And you want to hang out with people, and you want to enjoy the food, and the music, and the culture, the conversations. So that's like, if I was living in Toronto still, I'd just be hanging out with everybody. Yeah, yeah. But then I moved to Wellington, same thing, I just want to hang out with everybody. Have you been to, back to Toronto recently? No, not since before the pandemic, so I have no idea what to expect. I know the, kid, the city's transformed because their lockdown was, was brutal and the amount of time a lot of the small businesses went out of business, right? So a lot of my old neighborhood I won't recognize because all the old places I used to hang out didn't survive. And so what's happening, the economy is strong, so there's a lot of startup, like new. So, but because I'm not living through that, yeah. I'll go back and say, oh look, the old pub's gone, it's now there's something new or there's something new, there's something new. Yeah. So I would be rediscovering a city and people watching from Toronto will say that, yep. Yeah. Now even, like, there's an old club I used to hang out with, I talked to my nephew recently, it's called the Velvet Underground, I used to go there all the time. He says it's still there but it got taken over by a big corporate conglomeration, oh, so it's not how it used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh my god, but it's still a name, it's still there, but he says it's nothing like what, you know, like what it was like for you. Yeah. So even old things that I remember, even if they're still there, so they were losing money, so someone else bought them and took them over and changed them. Yeah. So if it's still there, someone else bought it. Or if it's if it went, you know, so it's a city that's, you know, moved on, uh, moved on. Yeah. Now that's an immigrant thing. When you move to a new country, 
you remember where you what you had when you left, but it's changing the day you leave. But you don't see the change. You remember, and then you have kids. You say, "Oh, back in my country, back in my country," and your kids. Then you take your kids to my country, and it's nothing like you said because I'm describing from the day I left. Yeah, yeah. And I say to my kids, "Oh, you know, back in my day, and back in this." And I take my kids there, like, "Oh my God, you're the biggest liar ever." It's nothing like you describe. Probably like how my parents might describe. Hong Absolutely, because they'll remember Hong Kong at a time, and they tell you yeah. about it, and then you go there, and you're like, "This is nothing like what you guys." And you know what the worst for that is? Italians. Italy. Oh, they're the worst because they'll go from Italy to New York or Montreal, or you name it. They go to mega cities, raise the kids. Oh, in the old country, in the old country. They're talking about the 50s or 60s or whatever when they left. Kids grow up, they go there today. Italy's not like that anymore. Oh, it's modernized and moved on. Be a second. Hello. Good, how are you? Yeah, just wrapping it up. No, I'm wrapping it up. Cool. Well, come here. Yeah, come here. We're most of it from there. Yeah, just come. Yeah, you can probably park out front. Yeah, there's lots of parking on Boulevard. Just park wherever. Sure. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, because I'm slow. We're just like talking away. Cool. See you soon. Sounded like your friend. Yeah, it's my friend. She's got her. She's working out here. Sorting out her dog. She's got a dog. She brought her dog in today. Yeah, like that little longer fringe, how it goes into your face like that. I love like that. Yeah. It looks great. Slightly annoying already for my eyes, but that's okay. I will get used to it. You'll get used to it, but that's that's the look though. The longer fringe, that's the look. Yeah. Now, fringe trims are always complimentary. You can always. I'm going to give you a couple free haircuts anyway. Um, to have to for support. If you want a shorter fringe, just pop in anytime. I'll do that. But keep this for today, the longer fringe, because that's the look. That is the look. Yeah. And then uh, as you go, I have a feeling your hair is going to end up a bit shorter than this um, just because you're going through that um, curiosity with your hair. And also, I think you're going to love the way it feels being liberated from all that that you had. Literal weight off my shoulders. Yeah, yeah. Literal weight off my shoulders. Absolutely. This is so cool. <gasps> Brush you off. And I'll grab a mirror, show the back. It's so short, but that's the haircut. That's the haircut. We don't go easy on you, we cut it. Yeah, yeah they always go easy on you at all. That's freaking, that's amazing, eh? It is. Yeah, it's so cool, yeah. Enjoy that, and it's, yeah, because it's summertime here in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Perfect time for a haircut like that. Awesome. Let's do a couple of after shots of it. What I'll do for after shots, we'll come over. Let's go outside. Outside? Yeah. Say bye to the tubers. Cool. And um, they can leave comments below. Let us know what you think. This is freaking amazing. Love it. And you go come in next month. So what are we? June? We're January. We're middle of January now. Yeah. Come in towards the end of February. Get to the next month. So hold up. Even middle of February, because you're gonna find this grows so fast. Come in like I'd say middle like 15 to 20th of February. Sometime in there. Come and see me. I'm not gonna charge you for your next haircut either. Because I'll give you a nice follow up. Yeah, because you you know, I'm here to support you through your journey as well. So we'll see you. Right about there. Right about there. If you want it done for Valentine's Day, come in on the 13th or 14th. Maybe, maybe you can do that. Then you can have that be your Valentine's Day. 
present. I'll give you about the, yeah, come in the 13th to 14th, somewhere around there. That'll be about the next day present. Yeah, cool. And enjoy, see you tubers.